Hello, my name is Alexander Morari, and I'm the founder of ITK Media. You've tuned in to our um, weekly podcast about Central and Eastern European startups that are in pre-seed and pre-series A stage. And today's guest is Shimon Nemchura, the co-founder of Talent Alpha. Talent Alpha is a SaaS platform that is transforming the way companies measure and manage their tech talent by creating a digital representation of their talent genome. Hello, Shimon. Hey, how are you? Yes, great, great. Hope you're fine as well. Um, can I ask you a straightforward uh, a question that was in my mind? Why do you think companies and startups are like, you know, getting out of their way to create a very complicated descriptions of their businesses? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the difficulty what I read is, out by, right now out loud, that's a very simplified version of what I found about the company. That's true. And the reason is because, you know, um, when we're building a company, we really want to have an impact on the current or the future world, right? We want to build something that is meaningful, that, you know, changes the stuff that bothers us. And the same, same way with all the startups that I've, that I've been built, uh, Talent Alpha is here uh, with, with his co-founders, with his team to make a dent. And, uh, and, and we really want to make sure that five and 10 years from now, the world where talent is looking for opportunity is fully digital. So it means that there are no boundaries. There is no discrimination in the process. It's, it's a data-driven uh, decision-making that, you know, enables anybody to get the, you know, opportunity that they, they should, should have. And, yeah. and that's, that's what takes us, you know, and it's kind of difficult then to craft this message to the current stakeholders, to the current businesses, right? Because uh, obviously it's very hard to sell uh, to a large multinational, uh, you know, organization with hundreds of thousands of people on board. Hey, we are here to change the future of work. We're here to, you know, uh, put the individuals in front and center and make sure that they are developed with your company. They're not going to buy it this way, right? of course. Uh, but that's because, you know, you need to find the right communication channel with, um, with your buying persona. Let's move on to our scenario then. And round one, as usual, will be the solution to the product. Um, in a nutshell, how would you introduce your um, platform? So, if we, the best and the simplest way to introduce to Town Alpha is to think about, uh, you know, human beings and what we're doing as an opportunity, right? And, you know, we all want to develop our skills. We want to grow in our roles, you know, and, and then sort of expand all the time, right? But to capture this, it's not easy. Um, capture in a way that, you know, you can use that data then to, for example, connect, you know, yourself with the opportunity that is really good fit to your skills, right? And um, we believe that this is needed for the future of work. So, for example, like you have, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you have servers, right? Every company had their own servers. There were collocation centers. All of the stuff was, let's say, um, decentralized in a way that it actually, you know, was driving the performance of the sum of all of those servers down. So, so basically there was a huge gap in utilization of these resources, right? And same thing with people. People are, well, a resource to some extent, right? Uh, but it's a resource that can be, that can be leveraged to, uh, to, to a much bigger extent than, than server, right? And, and this is where, you know, cloud computing is an inspiration. You know, you, 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 you centralize the servers, you digitalize the asset so you can manage the asset in a way that, you know, everybody is getting the fruits of, of that efficiency. And same way with people, you know, if, if you're able to put the right people uh, with the right role, with the right job to be done uh, fast enough, then you you gain as, a, as an ecosystem it gains productivity right so what you're seeing right now is if you go to the job posts you will see the same job post sites you know same job post sites posting the same jobs over and over and over and again right it doesn't really work it doesn't bring any productivity uh, nobody's using them anymore almost um, and sort of the, the whole system is analog is not efficient right yeah. in order to fix this you need to digitalize 
the, the the unit that is being transacted on, which is the talent. So Talent Alpha is digitalizing uh, people in a way uh, that helps them then to find the right opportunity. And right now we, for the purpose, started with the B2B world. So we're digitalizing assets of small, uh, medium-sized IT companies that doing are dev doing shops. outsourcing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Dev shops. Software, uh, how is this? Okay. Yeah, and we are connecting these shops with large multinational companies that normally would not be interested in talking to them, right? And um, and this is our test ground for our th thesis that we can build that networking function of people, right? If we if we build the right um, hardware, I would say wiring, right? And then the protocols, which is how do you describe a human being's uh, skills? Right? And I'm talking okay. about soft okay. skills, technical skills, yeah. and everything else that is really meaningful for connecting people with opportunity. Okay, so what I got by now is um, the marketplace is composed of a couple of, let's say, parties, right? There are sides to the marketplace. One of them is, um, let's say, the supply and demand side, right? So the supply part is not a separate kind of freelancer or single uh, self employed developer, it's a B2B. Uh, it's a B2B marketplace, I understand. Yeah. So the supply side is provided by small, medium software houses, dev shops, and so on. Okay. On the demands, exactly. on the demand side, you say are the big organizations that are what trying to fill in some blanks in their like current projects, right? Uh, exactly. Ad hoc or, or strategically. Okay. Yeah, and, so then, example, and the approach is for the SMBs, I mean, these small dev shops to, as you say, digitalize or analyze, right? I mean, to di dissect the talent that they have, I understand. Okay. Exactly. And and this th there is a business purpose of doing so, right? Uh, but, you know, in the future, we imagine that it, it, anybody can use, harness the power of a platform like that, right? So okay. right now we work with the B2B world. Wait, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean everybody can harness or can use the power of the platform? Do you mean you want to uh, open up to yeah. to um, freelancers as well? Uh, one day we believe that there's not going to be difference. There's not going to ah, be freelancer. Okay. There's not going to be B2B setups. Right now, this is the setup that is kind of natural, but it's also a very well controlled environment for us to work with, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, we believe that, you know, it's it's all about talent and connecting that talent with opportunity, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what they are, where they are, if they are freelancers or not. But long story short, I believe, you know, maybe 10, 20 years from now, everybody will be freelancers to a large extent. Um, and of course, we are preparing the network protocols for this to happen. That's why, you know, Talent Alpha is not just a marketplace. In order to fulfill the function of marketplace, we had to build entire taxonomy of skills, right? So for the tech roles, uh, we also had to build our proprietary psychometric model, mo yeah. uh, model that is enabling us to understand the, the key strengths of people uh, yeah. that are around uh, the way how they, for example, behave, think, and, and act. So, um, from, so from not, not only tech skills, but also soft skills, including like behavioral stuff and uh, psychometrics and so on. And exactly, all, all in one place. Enough. Okay. Yeah. So we built that entire taxonomy. We built those mechanisms, psychometrics, and we wrapped it together as a data model that we called talent genome. Yeah. But what is important is that it enables us to compare people. It enables us to do a very good comparison sort of that, that then we really, you know, comparing apples to apples, because most of the issue is that well, apples to at Samsung's. It, exactly. Uh, the, the biggest issue right now is that, you know, if, you, if you're doing HR process, you're capturing the data through ATS, right? So sophisticated, right? And uh, then you're looking at the CVs, you're looking at the, you know, cover letters, whatever, but then you're making a very analog decision because you know, it's, 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 it's not a digital process. I mean, come on, it's simplify a, a little bit. It's a non-deterministic process, yeah. right? By analog decision, you mean you just go by your guts, right? And whatever your gut exactly. says or your personal in intuition. Yeah. yeah, or even if you have a checklist, then you are going through the checklist, 
you are still using guts in order to tell you whether this this guy is more expert or not right and 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 that's why we call this process being non-deterministic so like in programming right it's it's every time we run it yeah. it's going to have different results based yeah. on the sort of even if the same input is 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 being used we're going to have different results because you know yeah. the recruiter had a bad day or a great day or uh, whatever right so that's the issue and we believe that it can be actually a deterministic process where the inputs uh, is going to be always giving the same results especially in um technology uh, software technologies which is very yeah, exactly because it, which because this is result driven right and you can you can judge the res by the results whether or not this is a good candidate for this or that position yeah, Look, and, let's and let's, let's, make, let's make a case study yeah. Shimon, sorry let's make a, 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 a case study i'm a small dev shop and you're a bigger co corporation that is going to check your platform for potential um uh, partners so let's say i have a team of 10 uh, developers engineers in different technologies yeah. let's say it doesn't matter now What do I have to do to appear in your marketplace and to be successful in promoting my services? Oh, that's a good question. So it's super easy. You just go to the to Talent Alpha. Uh, the address is app.talent-alpha.com and you have to register an account. It's just a couple of Click, clicks. Yeah. Uh, when you do that uh, and you have your company account, you can start adding your talent. And adding your talent, it really means that you create those initial profiles of people that you have internally and they, they are being invited to self-assessment forms. So we will send out forms to these guys um, and they will be answering questions, yeah. rating themselves, uh, assessing themselves. And then based on that data, uh, of course, hard skills, but also psychometrics, based on that data, then we can uh, look at the dream candidate of, for example, the company that is hiring. Yeah. and we can algorithmically compare them mm -hmm. together so it's super quick like it, you think you can think about it like uh you know um going through an algorithm by looking at the you know vectors that are closest to each other right so this way you can really find a really good match without sweat without you know running the the interview process so you no, first no, the, matching, the, matching... the matching process is more or less easy you have on the on the supply side you have separate separate I mean, uh, a set of skills, and then you have a set of expected skills, and this could be matched. This is clear. Yeah. And um, I want to understand the process from my point of view, a small dev shop, right? 10 people. Yeah. And Absolutely. how much time you think is on average um, needed for one engineer to go through, I mean, to get analyzed by the system and to be on yeah. the system and ready I, to- I would say, I would say uh, if it's an engineer with one role, main yeah. one main role uh it's going to be around 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes if it's an engineer that has two roles because usually they're you know be be have those, have those two roles then it's it's going to be you know 40 maybe 45 okay. minutes okay. to build a profile right but as an engineer in the process you're also um, exploring this so it's very interesting for you to see um how these you know skills have been developing where are you with your you know every single element of your of your, your programming life so that's pretty exciting and then you do the psychometrics and you get the psychometrics report as well so you see what kind of psychometric profile you are and and and, and what kind of creative behavior you, you got it's it's a very interesting experience but then from from your point of view as let's say an owner of the team or, or a leader of that team right you're getting the insights into your team you you're you have i would say an opportunity to understand in depth um how your team is what your team is composed of right you can use that to manage the team better but of course you can also select people from that list and put them on a public uh human cloud so other companies can browse or match uh within on your platform as well yeah exactly Just to make and sure. it's okay and it's And, and this piece, uh, for for the time being, it's it's free of charge. So anybody can join free of charge and start trying and, and doing that themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me, as an owner of this uh, small Jeff shop, I'm I need let's say my use story, right? Oh. I use your marketplace in order to promote services of my company and uh, hope somebody will notice and that there will be a match. Okay, first I understand this, but also you say there's another dimension to the platform. I can use it for my own in, internal needs as well. 
Yeah, exactly. And so see the dynamics of my talent development. And yeah, exactly. um, yes. okay, two critical questions. Do my developers, oh, sorry, I'm, are my developers' profiles anonymized? Absolutely. Fully anonymized. Anonymized internally, externally, all as well. So internally, they're not anonymized because you yes, should, okay. you, you can have access to that data, but externally, they're anonymized. So there's no way uh, anybody can figure out who that really is. Uh, so it's just a bunch of data points. Yes. Next question. Let's say Andrew, uh, the senior lead uh, developer, whatever, leaves my company and joins uh, my competitor. What happens with the profile of such a, a developer? So right now, uh, the, the company who is the ultimate. Who has the ultimate ownership? Let's say. Of the, yeah. Uh, of the so we are we are working towards uh, a world where ultimately these profiles are owned by the specialist, right? Uh, we're not there yet, um, so but we imagine the future is exactly like that. So you know, instead of using uh, the old recruitment process, there is no reason why this developer should use his already built taxonomy, already built profile to use it in, in, in uh, for the recruitment, right? So I think um, I think that's the that's the imminent future, right? And I think um, you know it's it's. In, in the business of all of us to actually be able to use this because then think about it from the other side imagine you are the software house uh owner dev show owner and you're hiring right how much easier the process is going to be for you if the candidates who apply to your job they already have digitalized profiles and you can compare i mean you don't have to compare the algorithm is going to compare these candidates to your composition of the team and going to point pinpoint these candidates that are the closest. So instead of spending time with 15 or 20 junior candidates, you're going to be only talking to three of them who are the best match. So this, you know, saves your resources, but also speeds up your capability to to hire. And of course, it puts you ahead of competitors, right? So um, instead of being protective with with the profiles, we should say let's embrace the profiles because they're helping us to transact. Yes, this all sounds like a great, you know, promise or, or like a business model and such. How far advanced are you in reality with um, this approach? What's the current status? So, what I mean? Uh, of the yeah. Product? So, so, so um, what we're really happy is that we've been able to create, uh, I think, more than sixty-five IT roles uh, um, taxonomies. So. We uh, we have very deep and and broad understanding of these roles, um, almost in all tech. So there's like maybe 30 more to go to have a full global coverage of IT roles. Um, we're also using machine learning to uh, further grow these uh, taxonomies, right? Um, so that's that's pretty exciting, and this is where we are scrapping the internet, but also looking internally on relationships between skills to understand um, how they form together to create a role, right? Because roles are merely etiquettes, right? They, they're not, they don't have any value. I mean, for Java developers- Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. And especially like having in mind all these um, fancy names for the titles in startup world, like, you know, exactly. nin Ninja for being like Guru Ninja, chief happiness of the second general of uh, freedom yeah. and so on, so on. Data freaks or whatever, yeah. So. So we really want to have a world where there are no job descriptions or the job descriptions are not really determin de determining anything. Yeah. So we are training all our, our algorithms in a way that the, the, the job description is just a, you know, an a, a additional set, uh, something that's not being used uh, uh, in, in the matchmaking process. We focus on the what's you know, below the waterline, so the, the skills purely. So I understand and you have 65 um, job ro or roles now with more or less complete taxonomies or like elements of these job roles, okay? And yeah. this is pretty initial stuff. Are you now working with clients? How many deal, you know, oh, profiles yes, you have on the marketplace? Have you made already deals between supply and demand, uh, demand oh, and yes. supply part, uh, sites? So, so we spent uh, we spent good chunk of the 2020 yeah. uh, working with our clients on the actual technology. So, um, from the transaction perspective, we booked uh, around one million dollars 
uh, of of transaction worth uh, in, in that year. Uh, Sorry, transacted means, or booked? Or, or do you mean transacted? Like you got you got paid yeah. around? We transacted. Uh, and um, what is interesting that is uh, we validated the model between uh, small IT shops and those large enterprises. We've been able to work with uh, larger corporations from Europe, but also the US. And uh, they are scaling up with the model right now. So it means that they, they like it and they, they see this as an advantage on the market. So I would say the model is tested. What we also were able to achieve is that we finished a uh, um, a scientific study of the psychometrics to validate if our psychometric model and tool is uh, as good as uh, the public models that are being used, you know, on pen and paper. Um, and uh, that was uh, 200 developers in the sample that validated our hypothesis. So our, our data model, our psychometric model works really well. Um, and, um, and, 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 and that's something that we are um, almost ready to fully uh, launch. So right now, psychometrics are hidden, hidden, hidden underneath. We tested it also with the then with clients. Uh, in the upcoming months, we will fully release them, so anybody can actually start using them uh, proactively. Right now, we captured the data, but we don't really show it yet to the to the public because uh, we're finishing up the reportings. So, um, so I would say we are quite ready this year to uh, to scale up this technology and and sort of um, be let's say deployed at larger enterprises that we've been able to close like one of them i can mention um, a huge uh, pharmaceutical company novartis um, from switzerland which is ramping up with us uh, there is also a um, huge collaboration that we are opening up with uh, infosys which is uh, one of the largest IT organizations in the world. So um, it's it's very exciting because you know we've been working super hard to to make it work, um, and and now it looks like this year is going to be very fruitful if it comes to the real market um, operations, and it's going to be crucial for us also to bring more and more value to specialists. So we, we hope we can help them. To make decisions about their, you know, uh, education about the, the skills that they need to get um, um, get trained in order to, you know, you know, step up the game. We're facing a, a, a true Armageddon right now because, you know, Microsoft um, showed uh, some some reports, some analysis, and looks like we will be, you know, short of uh, at least hundred million. Uh, IT roles in the next couple of years. So um, it looks like we really need to use our IT resources, our tech resources globally efficiently in order to be um, in order to be very, um, very successful as a as, 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 as habitants of Earth. So to put it otherwise, you say Microsoft predicts that in a couple of years there will be as many un unfilled tech jobs as there are people in the whole Central Eastern Europe, excluding yeah. Russia. True. Or maybe yeah. with Russia. Wow. So, so coming back, coming back to in working. simple words, how many? Oh yeah, sorry. How many individual uh, profiles of like developer profiles you have now on the uh, on the platform? So right now we have close to 3000 profiles that are fully, fully, fully created, like fully uh, filled in. And in our network, we have an access to around 15, maybe 16,000 profiles in total. Uh, that consists, that, that comes from um, more than 300 organizations, mainly from Central Eastern Europe, but we're expanding this year to North America, Central America, but also uh, APAC. Um, so we should see these numbers skyrocketing, hopefully, um, because we believe that um, these organizations can also use our technology internally uh, for their management, for uh, for even their hiring as well. Mm -hmm. So around 3,000 or so full profiles now already. You said 15K in your network. What does that mean? How, how does it, how do you That do means it? that the companies that have submitted uh, to Talent Alpha and have uh, become users and signed contracts with us uh, to use our marketplace, uh, they have this uh, talent pool 
in, in at their disposal. And just to make sure I understood, um, in 2020, the, your your turnover was uh, tw uh, one million um, what dollars you said, and what's yes, the dollars. pricing model then uh, for for the platform? So our model is evolving. Uh, this year we're introducing uh, a subscription model, so you'll be able to use our platform on subscription basis, depending on the features that you are tapping into and the size. Uh, there's going to be definitely a size that comes free. So um, anybody can start using it. Uh, but if you grow and you, you know, get more value from our platform, this is where we want to get them, get some of the value back. Um, the previous model that was uh, very successful throughout the year was based on a uh, small percentage fee that we always added on top of the hourly rates that were offered through the marketplace. So that was uh, it was successful, um, and uh, we we just plan to take it to the next level with software subscription, as there's more software component to the entire equation uh, with every single month. Yeah, when you say a small percentage of hourly rate, can you disclose how how small it is? Yeah, it was it was usually between ten to twenty percent, depending on the case. Okay. And why do you think this is not a viable long-term pricing model? Seems to be easy uh, to follow, easy to even to calculate, settle, and all. And 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 the the more the bigger the scale, the lower could be the percentage points. It's, it's just a also. matter of uh, it's just a matter of the per per uh, per perception on that, right? Um, of course, there's going to be different perception for a large multinational organization and different perspective from a smaller uh, organization. So I would say we're trying to find a model that really fits into everybody's world, right? And uh, especially when Talent Alpha is less and less sort of the, let's say, orchestrator of the, of the, of the deal of the, of the project but more as a, as a software that is really making, you know, the connection possible. So we become less of a vendor, more of an operating system. And this is where, you know, uh, we believe you know, maybe the way to go is actually with subscriptions rather than, um, rather than percentage. Um, but that's still, I would say, being heavily experimented with. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's move on, Shimon. Let's move on to round two. Competitive landscape. In a nutshell, how come? I mean, I know this is a very competitive uh, space, but who would you name as your biggest competitors and um, how do you plan to beat them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's funny because we play on the intersection of three different markets. So the first market, the biggest market would be the IT services market, right? This is a trillion, well, basically one trillion dollar uh, market that is, you know, uh, inhabited by so many players out there, including, you know, 26% of this market being taken by the largest companies such as EPAM, Infosys, Capgemini, and so on and so on, right? So this is where we are touching that market uh, but we're touching that market as a partner. So we really want to help to build efficiencies for these companies, right? Together with the smaller players that consist of the of the rest of the market. And they're all scattered all over the world. It's like 300,000 of companies, right? And the second market is the market of talent and analytics. And this is the market where, you know, companies like Gloat, uh, Pymetrics and so on, they're trying to find the common denominator for talent. Right. Um, why is so important? Because without the talent, uh, the talent uh, intelligence, the talent analytics, you cannot really transact digitally. Right. So, um, so we said instead of trying to use what's out there on the market, let's build our own methods for gathering that data so we can make those transactions. Now, uh, the third market is the market of let's say um, they, they call it this name now human cloud right so these are the markets that freelance platforms like you know upwork um uh, and so on that are you know providing you the resource right but the thing is that none of these none of these players 
they're thinking holistically about the life cycle of talent, about the fact that you have to manage the skills, you know, and then make sure that you have the skills on three different levels. So individual level, then organizational level, and then the ecosystem level, right? And what does that mean is that, you know, um, when I need a skill, if I have the right, uh, right information about my organization, I can decide whether I'm taking that skill internally, right, from other department. I am building that skill internally, or I am actually going, you know, um, on the market and trying to find that skill elsewhere for for the for the purpose of my of my business, right? So the whole idea is that we bring all of these three markets together, the best things of, out of them, to make sure that we create new efficiency, uh, that that digital talent uh, that can be transacted and. Um, and this is what is exciting because, uh, again, it's all scattered. It's not really helping, right? So how can you how can you use Upwork talent if you have no connection between your existing talent? You don't. There is no way you. It's it's still an analog process. You know what I mean? Yeah. Y yes. Okay. Interesting. Do I understand correctly? There is nobody in the market globally who is approaching these challenges uh, holistically just as you are that's what we believe yes there yes. are there are market players who are looking at those sections or intersections between the two but nobody is thinking holistically about all the three um that jointly can uh, can make a big impact on efficiency on the market mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have a look at it from another point of view then, if uh, competitors are not many. Uh, let's see what sectors, so let's say what types of businesses are under attack or might be under attack by your business model. You mentioned two at least. Uh, in a way, job boarding sites or job boards are yeah. under huge attack if they do not adapt. And if they do, they will need to make uh, this catch up uh, exercise definitely. And second is the, I think in a way, small dev shops are also also um, in danger just because as you said, each individual profile ultimately will be owned. I mean, uh, will be owned by the specific engineer developer. And then yeah. the mobility in the market, in the uh, labor market, I mean, mobility in the labor market then will be uh, higher and then each small dev shop will have less, let's say, or fewer opportunities basically to maintain and retain talent. Yeah. So, so yeah, these are very good questions. So let's let's look at the first one. So, uh, the job uh, job boards. The job boards. Uh, most of the job boards. I'm not talking about all of them, but most of the job boards are basically like Craigslist, right? You can imagine, you probably remember that world where Craigslist was also a marketplace, right? People were putting the offers for transacting, right? And this is exactly where, what it is right now. This is like trying to go to Amazon, but instead of going to Amazon to buy your stuff, you're going to a Craigslist, yeah. right? It's it's a totally different experience, right? It ser serves, serves the same purpose, right? So I would say most of the job boss is gonna extinct because uh, first yeah. of all, they're not really make good, do, making the good job, right, of digitalizing the process. Uh, they are, let's say, overbooking the same job posts over and over and over. Um, and at the same at the same time, uh, speaking about the IT world, there is very little people who are really putting attention to the job bo job boards in IT world. So um, so that's of course my opinion, right? Um, if if we talk about the second question. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Let's 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 hang hang on here. So some players started to evolve <laughs> to evolve somehow, and jobs job boards like mm, no flap jobs or no flap jobs, right? You know, you know the, the sure. them. So they, they try to also somehow to dissect, let's say, the taxonomy of a jo job title or a function in a tech industry, and then try to do the same matching exercise that as you are trying to do in a on a deeper level, uh, but the majority still are like outdated, outsourced, lazy business models. You could say. Yeah, and I think and I think that's the direction, right? You need to think uh, how can you help the the main persona there, which is the engineer, right? Because without this supply, you cannot really make your job board work, right? 
Um, and I think this is where uh, the issue is because the demand for technology talent is skyrocketing right now. Yeah. It, okay. it's, it's beyond every imagination um, uh, that we had. So, um, so it's, it's, they're not going to show up. They're not going to show up if it's not helping you. So if it's not helping them. So I, I would strongly advise to go after really fulfilling their, um, their requirements. And the reality is they're not looking for a job. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be hard. I think the model needs to change. You, you need to find something more creative. Um, same way as LinkedIn is not working, right? Uh, if, you, if you ask 10 engineers, hey, how, how often you update your LinkedIn profile, how often you visit that, it's not going to be a, you know, a, a success story for, for, the, for the LinkedIn investors, right? But, um, but the, and that's but the very whole... specific to IT and tech uh, sectors, definitely. Yes, exactly, right? So my, my point is that you, you, you have to build something that is useful for the engineers. Yeah. So it helps to save their time, give them more value. And this is what, what I believe we are building at Pound Alpha. Yeah, in, in, in a nutshell, if this is a candidate driven labor market, then your service should be candidate focused or candidate oriented, right? Yeah, but you have to remember they're not candidates yet, right? They are, they are specialists and you need to help them to be even better specialists for, for, to have their attention, right? Because they're not candidates, they they don't they in most cases they don't want to change their job because they already have one. There's already you know a ton of recruiters spamming their LinkedIn account, so they don't even open it. Um, then if they find out his his or her email, God forbid, right? But the thing is that it's it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very yeah. difficult in that space. Mm -hmm. So let's say they are candidates to for being candidates. But anyways, let's move on. What about the small dev shop? Uh, are, am I, as an owner of a small dev shop, under in danger? No, you're actually in a very good position. And uh, let me tell you why. Because uh, the demand is skyrocketing. And you, as an owner of a small IT shop, you are the best person in the location that you're sitting, right? Whether it's a small town or, or, or a larger city or whatever, that you know has to bring in that talent. Needs to take that talent on board you know, train it, um, make it, you know, acquainted with the market uh, and scale it. And then eventually people will move. It's, it's inevitable, right? But small IT organizations, they're experts in bringing that skill in, in, in sort of making, uh, making you from, from junior to senior, right? And that's the, that's the specialty. So I think smaller organizations actually is going to be thri thriving because they will have more firepower at their disposal. They could focus on the stuff that they do, do really well. And at the same time, they could service really large uh, clients that have big problems so they can challenge their, their skills uh, with, those, with those problems. And this is what we see, right? So I would say that's the model of the future. I'm not saying that these small organizations will, you know, become more and more um, you know, built around the people that they have. They they will have to let it go, right? But their specialty, the fact that they're nimble and and very ex, you know uh, highly expertized, this is uh, this is going to help. Um, so it's quite contrary, I believe. Yeah, for the time being, I'm okay. But long term, let's see what time brings to small uh, dev shops. Shimon, great. Let's move on to next round. And in a nutshell or briefly, what would you say are the company's ups and downs in the last 12 months or so? Oh, well, uh, running a startup is ups and downs all the time. So uh, just, a, just a disclaimer that it's, it's a normal thing. Um, and yeah, I've been through uh, building startups and it's always the same story, right? Yeah. The most so important thing. What's, is what's the biggest? I mean, the highest summit and the lowest um, pitfall. Uh, do you want something very talent alpha specific or in yeah. general? Okay. So, um, if it comes to talent alpha, the biggest. Uh, let's start with the positive. Uh, so the biggest jump was where we were able to really get traction with those you know large organizations so we were showing them what we have and we heard a wow right 
to, a, to, a, to, to an extent that, you know, they been treating us very serious, even if we were just, you know, let's say almost uh, just, a, just a presentation yeah. guys uh, with, with slides, but they really were buying the vision and it showed us that, yes, this, this, is, this is going into the right direction. So, so you didn't even, you didn't didn't have even to to introduce and to present the portfolio of these three thousand plus eventually fifteen thousand developers, that was even before that, right? Yeah, exactly, right. So the so we were itself, okay. we were really we were really excited that the vision works, but not only for the large players but also for the IT shops. We've been talking with them about their problems, how we can become that extra you know afterburner to their sales, how we can make their capacity fully utilized and it worked maybe not for the entire bucket right now because we've been focused on very very specific clients so we, we were limited in scale uh because we are large it team rel relatively large RTT, it team and a small market team so we had to you know eat that elephant um you know step by step but the thing is that um we found out that, okay, we can make these two different types of players working together. So that gives us a, a very confident feel that, um, you know, it works, the, 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 the assumptions work. And if it comes to the, you know, low sides, I mean, there is, there is plenty, right? Uh, because for example, sometimes it's, you know, hard to get to the same vision or agreement with, you know, investors, right? Sometimes, you know, um, you know, you realize that you just wasted a month of work because, um, you know, somewhere out there, you've been not, you know, clear about the direction. Um, there, there is, there is, there is, there is always those. Let me uh, help down. you then. Let, let me help yeah. you then. So you mentioned this, uh, I understand some uh, frictions with the investors. You have your vision, investors have their own vision. How do you deal with such situation? And let's, Let's take this as an opportunity to share some advice with uh, fellow startups. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. So this is this is an extra work, right? This is this is something that, if it's not you know really clear on the, the initial round, right, um, then it's going to be a tax that you will be paying on the every single board meeting because then you have to explain in details uh, your thought process, uh, the feedback from the market, and so on and so on. So I would say. It's super important to spend time with your investors early on, so they fully understand your idea. They they get they get they get behind it, and as you start running, they're not going to be stopping you and then asking questions that you already answered, right? Um, you mean post or before say, round uh, yeah, closing? Yeah, before the round, right? So yes, okay, choose okay. investors carefully and find those who can really understand the space that you're in. Uh, that, that's the that's the thing, right? And then you need to put extensive amount of work to make sure that your investors are well informed. They, they fully understand your position um, and they can be productive. You, you, you have to show your investors how they can be productive in that relationship. What kind of knowledge you expect from them, the behavior and so on and so on. Especially if you're if you're working with less experienced investors, right? Um, those, I would say, very experienced Western investors, they, they know how they can contribute and they know how to build the right rapport with you so, so you're productive. Uh, and here in Poland, we still are, you know, getting through those, um, um, through those um, processes. We're fairly young ecosystem of startups. So everybody needs to yeah. learn, uh, founders, investors, everybody in the mix also employees right they need to understand that this is a different type of beast right it's um it's a, it's a it's a different pace it's a different uh stress level uh, and you know one of the things that i truly believe in in startups is that you need to have a team that really uh is interested in the domain that you're building yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like ABC. And uh, look, I had, a, I had a question right now popped up in my mind. Would you agree with this statement that um, Western, by Western, I mean Western European, US, UK, and whatever. So Western, sure. Western um, VCs are more of a laissez-faire type than local Central Eastern European kind of uh, native investors like letting letting it go and giving more freedom to startups 
based on your own experience, maybe experiences of uh, like your that would be that would, that would be a simplification. Yeah, I I would I would agree to this, uh, but with the but with the additional uh, comment that actually it is coming from a different perspective on money. So when we're talking about Western investors, they're investing in uh, in a different way because they have uh, I would say. Um, better access to capital, right? And if you have better access to capital, it enables you to invest with, I uh, would say, a uh, more aggressive uh, profile, right? So this means that you are able to found, found, let's say, 10 startups, right? And if just one or two of them are doing great, you're going to have a payout, right? Uh, it doesn't mean it's, you know, you don't give a damn it means that you have more cash pool to spend so you can be more aggressive the investors in poland well, less rational they, right you see exactly they need to be more uh, in in touch with the ground because um well they have less capital they have less money to, to play with so therefore they cannot uh, well um cannot afford these businesses to be you know uh, let's say not managed well and in some cases, it's really helpful, right? But in some cases, and um, that I heard in stories uh, that, that I've been listening to, it, in some cases, this is sometimes the the reality of failure that comes because the investors want to micromanage your company, right? So I, I it's it's the it's the reality. This is where we are. But I think Poland has a really good opportunity ahead, right? Because we have all of that talent here, the tech talent. We're adding now the business talent with the startups that we're trying to build with people who went to the US and now maybe they're going to come back one day. But the thing is that um, we're catching up on the business side with the world. Of course, it's going to take decades, but um, it will mean that in a in, in, in couple of decades from now, we'll have full uh, reach ecosystem that can be building amazing things. And this is the understanding that that everybody needs to have. It takes time, right? We are, you know, trying to get ahead of the race that started for us, you know, very recently. Yeah, and even your dog is barking the same uh, tree, so it's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> she or he just expresses her consent. Yeah, she's yeah. quite nervous. <laughs> the, yeah, and again, in simple words, the. With time, the impact of the, uh, of the importance of uh, public money will go down, hopefully, and then more business-driven kind of um, uh, more, let's say, like or le less regulated VC markets might take over uh, with purely private uh, money and um, let's say more capitalist approach to VC uh, market as well in Poland. I think I think it's already happening, right? We see early birds of that. Uh, I think it was a very good idea for the government to actually go after, you know, pumping money into that into that ecosystem, because to be honest, that's the issue, right? I mean, um, every market did that US uh, started there, right? With the, with the government money being invested in technology companies in the Silicon Valley. Then you see, you know, those great chebos of Korea that were actually built by the government money and now they can compete and lead the global markets, right? So I think it's, 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 and of course the same, same story in China, right? So I think it's about being smart about this, right? You need to kick off some of the resources to build a momentum that then enables you to play and transact globally. And I think this is really good that we're building it here in Poland. Um, I think we are building that, you know, know-how and experience that's going to be crucial for the next things uh, coming out of this country. Yeah, true, true. So with this in mind, let's move on to round four. And this will be about the company, uh, Talent Alpha itself. Um, as a very quick intro, founded in 2018, I understand. Um, so there are, of course, there's a team of uh, co-founders, Przemek Berend, CEO of the company, Shimon yourself, Shimon Nimchura, uh, Mike Kennedy. Uh, these are the three, right, in the founding team. Yeah. That's, so what's, uh, in, what's interesting, Przemek has a like, huge experience in similar or even like almost the same industry, basically. 
yeah. talent management because Luxoft, where he was global marketing VP, I understand, um, yeah. depends on tech talent. And, and CMO, right? So, so Przemek was the CMO of, of, of Luxoft and he was among the top executives to bring that company to the stock exchange in, in New York. Yeah, so, yeah. NYSE. Was mm -hmm. yeah. the division uh, of labor in the founding team, by the way? All right, that's a good question. So, um, of course, it was ch it's changing all the time, right? Uh, when we started mid 2018, we've been, you know, uh, let's say a band that was doing everything, right? From um, from preparing, start building the technology by, you know, drafting UX and so 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 and so and so, um, going to conferences and, and presenting and getting some initial interest from from potential clients um to validate our ideas we've been you know trying to divide our focus into the areas of expertise so uh by eating our own dog food we actually looked at our profiles so first i mean we didn't have the technology that tan alpha is providing that back then so we were looking into for example strength finder uh so the clifton strength finder uh also known as gallop uh we've been looking at the the traits that we have and how to apply the traits to different ideas so for example we quickly figured out that you know for example myself um i'm i'm quite useful if it comes to do stuff that you know requires uh some 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 strategy but also individualization of the issue right uh, Mike, he's very, very analytical. So he was, you know, able to help us with, you know, making sure that we have uh, a very detailed roadmap and, and, and specification for the product. Um, and Przemek, he's a natural leader. So he was, you know, um, the CEO and sort of clipping together the entire company. Um, this, this, this setup evolves all the time. So um, right now uh, we have a new joiner to the uh, to the executives, uh, Tony Roberts York, who was um, uh, his recent role was uh, to be the CEO of UBS Poland, um, and, and and Tony now took over the operational part of the business. Um, and um, Shemek and myself and, and Mike, we can focus on the investment round that we're building right now. Okay, we'll discuss the investment around a little bit later. So Tony joined as a co-founder with the equity um, on start. Yeah, he joined. He joined as a COO um, mm -hmm. just 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 two months ago. Yeah, functionally I understand, but anyway, so he's part of the cap table right now, right? Uh, yeah, as a as a form of uh, employee stock option plan. Yes. Cool. Yeah. What about the rest of the team? How many people you are right now, and uh, what's the uh, proportional ratio between uh, tech stuff and maybe sales or client facing yeah absolutely so i um, i'm i think we're 29 people right now maybe 30. um i would say that uh, almost uh, 20 are in the tech so uh, but of course it's a mix of uh, not just engineers uh but also qa but also um support functions and then we have a team that's you know building the talent science so there are psych uh, psychologists two psychologists on the on the on the team plus the ux and design team so it's it's roughly 20 people in that bucket then 10 10 people which are the market facing including the founders as well because we also do sell uh do work with the clients a lot um, so I would say that's the ratio. Um, and of course, some admin, we have two people in the admin that help us on the burden of, you know, the paperwork and everything else that is uh, there. I haven't checked, but let me, let me, let me guess. In your sales team, you sh must have somebody from, with uh, IT recruitment background. Yes, exactly. We do oh. have. Uh, this is this is uh, this is where you know the, the matching process comes in uh, because we have to build it, we have to run it, we have to uh, then in the in, in the process learn um, and improve our software and algorithms. So we do have a professional recruiter. Yeah. So that was 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 what was on my mind. So there's another industry that you are uh, about to disintegrate recruitment, IT recruitment as such, almost joking there again. 
<laughs> Shimon, and uh, by the way, are you hiring yourself right now? And if yes, what roles are most like important, essential for you? Yes, uh, we are. Well, we, we're constantly hiring in the IT, so we are we're looking for uh, for developers um all the time uh here mainly uh java for the back end and uh front uh front front end developers uh with react um so um but that's a constant thing then um i think we do have qa uh roles that are open um we're also uh, hiring on the market side um so probably we will not hire a lot of people before the round a that's going to happen mid this year but um, we still have open positions for uh, junior recruiter, so junior IT recruiter. Um, and I believe we do have an open position for um, project manager for uh, making sure that uh, our key initiatives with clients, uh, but also then customer success function of, of clients, especially the larger ones are, are well uh, catered to. And what are the most important tools in your hiring process? How do you hire? Through what instruments, platforms? You know, uh, we're getting ready to hire with our own software. So that's, uh, that's going to take us a little bit, uh, but uh, we hope that's going to be possible this year. Yeah. Um, and not just for the IT, but, but, but broader, right? So uh, using our own psychometrics. Um, when we hire, we really want to make sure that we fully understand the person that we are in about to, to work with, right? So that means, you know, um, we often do the Clifton Strength Finder, finder to, to understand uh, the profiles. Um, depending then on the role, we have different routes, right? Um, for, for, the, for the engineers, it is coming through the profile of Talent Alpha. For the, for the business roles, uh, it's usually some sort of, you know, workshop um, assignments and then working together. Um, and at the, sort of the last step is that making sure that the people we take on board, they're excited about HR tech market or, or the IT and tech market in general. So they can find that, you know, extra motivation uh, and extra excitement uh, when, they, when, they, when they come to the, to the meetings and, and work. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, there should be some kind of a, you know, match, match or self-identification with the business somebody's doing, of course. Shimon, yes, great. Let's move on to round five, Formula F3, as we call it. And now I understand this is funding for the future. <laughs> so by now, I understand more or less your funding by now is uh, about five million dollars raised your uh, seed round was um somewhere in the midst of um lockdown if i remember correctly in may 20 oh no wait 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 that was may 2019 was not 2020 of course yeah exactly. time fl time flies and that was uh, for, with with upper aper ventures yes now what's the current status you mentioned already that you are uh, getting ready for series a are you now in the market already or when, yeah, we were preparing, yeah. right? Uh, we had some initial conversations uh, to to calibrate our pitch and to talk to investors that we truly value to to get the right feedback. Um, we are almost ready to start uh, touring uh, in, in a full uh, full speed. So I think in the next month, in the next couple of weeks, we will be reaching out to a broader net net of investors. Um, to see if there are good fits for uh, for our plan, um, and um, yeah, we want to close that round in the next couple of months uh, by the by the end of uh, first uh, first uh, half of the year, um, and we're looking to raise around ten million dollars uh, for the expansion, so the global expansion. Most of that money will go into actual business expansion of of Talent Alpha. Yeah, you mean like market penetrations, right? Exactly. So European and US market yeah. um, for for the business expansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Business expansion. And again, you mean to set like your foot physically in those markets or just to focus on reaching out to them from Poland to clients? Um, you know, um, I think, you know, physically um, it, it's it's an important task to be 
close to your clients, uh, not only sort of mentally, but also, you know, in the same time zone, um, but the same culture as well. So very likely we'll be hiring, you know, salespeople or account managers in the US um, that will be able to work remotely from, from these locations, of course. Um, the formula changed, right? Before COVID, we thought, okay, probably an outpost here and there in the US would, 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 uh, would make sense, right? But right now we see that we, you know, the, the best option is actually to look for the right people um, that can work remotely and doesn't really matter where they sit. Um, but uh, the time zone coverage is important, right? Uh, you need to be in the same time zone with your clients so you can discuss stuff when, they're, when they want to discuss that. So, um, so that's definitely something that's going to be uh, built up, but also the marketplace functions. So people who are running the marketplace, right? Helping us to scale uh, in, in all the dimensions of that marketplace. So these will be the roles that we'll be hiring for sort of this uh, internal mechanics of the platform. And these will be as well business people that we want to uh, take on board uh, to help us to grow this uh, organic organically to some extent yeah sounds exciting do i understand correctly your overseas like western european us expansion will be focusing on the demand side right that's where the biggest demand and that's where you could create this kind of a um, you know arbitrage of uh, relatively uh, cheaper i mean relative because it's all becoming more and more uniform, cheaper uh, talent yeah. pool in Central Eastern European kind of regions or macro regions, let's say, that is in fact acting as a, as a like supply channel to the Western markets. To a large extent, you're right, yes. Uh, but also um, the way how we are selling our solution is we think holistically about the problems of our potential clients. Because we target here really large organizations, we can very quickly show them how applying our technology can bring results to their current skill management um, you know, function. And this is where they, they this is the, the wow moment. It's like, because we're bringing together two very different things. We are giving them talent insights uh, and we're giving them a marketplace. At first, these two things don't, don't mix well, right? But then when you start thinking about it, like actually I can uncover the skills, understand the gaps, and now I can decide if I fill these gaps internally and externally. And if I want to do it externally, it's just a couple of clicks away. It changes your perspective on how can you be very much competitive on the market, right? So instead of, you know, then, you know, building job posts and trying to find the right people or then working with your vendors, um, that takes a lot of time. And here, in just a matter of minutes, you can you can have an answer. So I would say this is more about this is more selling like enterprise software uh, than anything else. Yeah. OK. Uh, so so that's why that's why we need to have very specific people in the sales mix. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Let's let's wrap up a little bit and uh, let's finish with um, your, I mean, as a founding team or your own exit plan, if you have any. What's what's your dream scenario for the company somewhere down the road? Well, it's more about the direction, right? Um, I, I I don't have an exit plan. I I, I would be very proud if this compa- company is able to 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 complete the vision, right? The world that I imagine in 10 years from now, where, you know, my kids are going to go on the job market and they, in, in, despite the fact they live in a small town near Krakow, they could be working for the best companies, for the best opportunities that come from, I don't know, Japan, right? I don't care. But the, the thing is that th- there is no discrimination in the process. The only thing that matters is your skills, your attitude and the stuff that you want to achieve and everything else doesn't matter. So as long as this company is building this, I think I'm happy. Um, I don't really care uh, at what point of time this is gonna exit or materialize. Um, uh, but of course, it's an important thing. So I'm not neglecting it. I'm just saying that it's it's a, it's a secondary thing. If if you're if I believe if we're able to create that value, if we're able able to create that uh, world that is connecting the talent with opportunity with no barriers 
that's already a huge uh, payout for, for myself and I think for the rest of the team. Well said. Shimon, thanks a lot. All the best. Good luck with your Series A and um, getting closer and closer to execution of your vision. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening and yeah, have, have a great uh, rest of the day. So I hosted today Shimon Niemczura, a co-founder of Talent Alpha, which is a startup based in Poland and it's a human cloud platform enabling organizations to manage, measure, access and share talent. Its mission is to make predictable technology adoptions by identifying and nurturing the top experts from the best IT service companies globally and matching them with the client's needs anywhere in the world, erasing the barriers uh, actually for most of them. Talent Alpha is about to kick off its Series A round targeting 10 million USD to fuel its expansion to key global markets. Let's wish them good luck with the A round. That's it for now. Bye-bye.